Hey everybody, we are here with another Vector Space Talks and it is quite the pleasure today because Quadrant just released 1.7 with all kinds of cool features and we're here to talk about them today. There are three notable pieces to this puzzle. First one is custom sharding. Second one is all about sparse vectors. And the third piece is the discovery API. This video right here, we're talking with my man, Andre V, the CTO of Quadrant, all about custom sharding. So let's get into it. And as a reminder, if anybody wants one of these cool shirts, Quadrant is just giving them away like hotcakes, baby. Andre, what is custom sharding and why is it relevant? Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. So as you might know, Quadrant have already sharding in place for quite some time. Uh, it allows us to scale beyond just a single node. You can spawn as many machines as you like, and the uh, data will be automatically distributed across them. But there were a small limitation, is that uh, once you created shards, it was kind of fixed in place, so you could not create more shards inside the collection, you could not delete some shards, you could only move them around and create replicas. And uh, it is fine for some level of, uh, of, of the scale, but we want to go beyond that. We want to go to the gazillion scale deployment. And that's where you actually need custom sharding. So what custom sharding actually does, it uh, allows you to specify a key which would be used uh, to locate which shards should be used for your data. So whenever you upload something, you can specify this and Quadrant will automatically know on which machine your data should be placed. And it works in other directions as well. Whenever you search for something, you can specify a shard or several shards and Quadrant will know where to find them and avoid asking all machines in your cluster for further results, it will uh, minimize the overhead and maximize the performance. Yeah, that's, that's basically the reason. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, you get to say exactly which shard you want it to go in just by that that you're showing on the screen, which is just like shard key, my shard. And I'm wondering about the scaling of this and if it is dynamic like if all of a sudden i throw in too much what does that look like i feel like there's something special in there that you want to talk to us about yeah exactly so uh we introduce uh two new api endpoints one for creating shards and one for deleting shards so whenever you have a collection uh, configured to support this custom sharding you can cre create new shards, you can delete shards dynamically without restarts, without downtime. And this actually gives us um, a three level of isolation of your data. So we already have a collection-based isolation. We already had a payload-based isolation, which is uh, frequently used to uh, create a multi-tenancy setup. But now, we have this resource-based isolation where you have a single collection, but you can um, manipulate and uh, customize the placement of shards inside your cluster more like accurately, more more precise, and avoid a any kind of overhead um, for for this book. And for those who potentially haven't played around or don't live in Cassandra land. What problem does sharding solve? Right. So uh, there are several scenarios which you might be interested in. First is uh, a regional, region-based data placement. So imagine you have uh, customers all around the world, and while customers want to query data from uh, US, other customers want to query data from Europe. And to achieve this within the same cluster, what you can do, you can just assign uh, shard keys based on the data location. So you would have one shard for Europe, one shard, shard for Asia, one shard for United States, and so on. And 
each customer will only query the region they actually interested in and it will allow you to avoid this cross uh, continental traffic which is kind of expensive at the same time you will be able to manage your data from the one place from the one collection and one cluster and even uh, enable a replication across different regions yeah and this actually i know a lot of use cases of people working in the healthcare space where they can't for maybe some kind of hipaa compliance or if i know if you're in canada data that is related to healthcare data cannot leave canada so even if your company is global you can't have any of that canadian data going anywhere and i feel like this is perfect for that right right that yeah that's that's another reason uh you still want the data to be available from other regions but you want to keep them in a specific shard which is located on a specific machine exactly and uh, do not do not leave the the region uh, that was the first use case. Uh, the second use case is actually a time-based data placement. So it is similar to uh, region, but in this case, let's say, let's say you have a, a, a stream of data and you're only interested in the latest updates. You do not want to um, index a whole history but you only uh, want, uh, let's say, last week. So in this in this case, you can uh, organize your um, your shards by by the date, and uh, all recent updates will go into one shards. Uh, and once uh, the next day comes, we will just deprecate the, the shards which is outdated. It will be removed without any um, latency, because you would need you would you would bypass the requirement to pinpoint exact points you should delete and it will just delete the whole uh, shard in one one shot. It's especially relevant for social media platforms uh, which deals with a lot of traffic um, and you know, those uh, companies who work with this type of data. Yeah, so then the last use case that you had here or the last um, piece of why we would shard, I guess, and not exactly use case is being able to control have more control over indexing exactly uh yeah that's a um key component of of the uh, separation between search and index time uh, so imagine you have a machine which can do um a lot of indexing it is it have high cpu high memory uh but it's also very expensive and you don't need it to be uh, engaged all the time. Um, so what you can do, you can uh, create a shard especially for uh, this machine, uh, create indexes with this uh, large machine and then transfer the shards to another uh, machine which is designed to serve data. So it can have high uh, disk throughput, but maybe not as big RAM uh, and CPU configuration. Uh, and it's also um, now um, available because we implemented um, snapshot-based shard transfer in our recent version. So it's uh, not directly uh, due to uh, custom sharding, but it's also the feature we uh, introduced in, in the latest release. And what is that exactly, the snapshot-based? Snapshot-based shard transferring. So previously we just transferred data between machines within the cluster now we can transfer data and the index you build oh nice okay so this feels like it's perfect for use cases with a lot of data what scale do you recommend us using the sharding as opposed to just the good old plain vanilla version of yeah. it as soon as you see that your data may not fit a single machine, it's already relevant. It gives you a precise control, so you don't need to actually have a gazillion scale deployment, but uh, if you do have a gazillion scale deployment, you can have no choice but use uh, this uh, um, precise management of your data. But it's still useful even for uh, smaller deployments. Yeah, 
That makes sense. And does it matter the size of the vectors? No, no. All vectors it can be used to do this. Cool. All right. And I think that's about it as far as custom sharding. Is there anything else that you want to go into? No, oh, I think that's fine uh, for, for now. How do we get started? Uh, yeah, just create a collection with sharding method uh, explicitly and then yeah, you're good to go. And of course, upgrade to version 1.7. Yeah, uh, hopefully is a given, but you never know. You can never be too explicit these days. <laughs> right on. Well, Andre, I appreciate the time and you explaining this new feature. It sounds like a lot of fun. If anybody decides to use it and write about it, we will send you some shirts. We love hearing about what the community is doing. So hit us up. Let us know what you thought of it. And uh, who knows? Maybe submit a PR so Andre can have something to do at night. <laughs> See you all later. Thank you.